Today's video is going to entail the the beginning steps of getting your website going which is mainly to find an available domain name and then purchase a domain name and then get host web hosting and then connect your domain name to your web hosting via what's called the DNS the name servers now this is mainly for people that uh, don't buy their domain name when they purchase their web hosting so there's a couple extra steps it's really not that it's very simple actually very simple process but the simplest process way to do it is to buy your domain name at your web host but that's not the way I like to do it so first of all we're gonna find it choose a domain name see if it's available and I'll show you a cool site that'll show you instantly if it's available or not and then we'll show you a couple different places that I like to buy my domain names and then we'll go get web hosting and then we'll do the process of connecting your domain name to your web hosting account so here's a cool site called InstantDomainSearch.com, and it does just what it says. You just type in a domain name of your choice. Now, getting a domain name, I would suggest you know you can use your brand name or your your personal name, which is fine, or you can use some keywords in there. Google used to give a lot of credit for extra credit, I guess you'd call it, for having your keyword in your domain name. They don't do it so much anymore. The one, a couple things to remember though with your domain name try to make it something that's easily remembered and don't make it too long either um, in fact the shorter the better sometimes as long as it gets your point across so anyway we're at instantdomainsearch.com and just type in whatever you are to want for your domain name now it'll give you some different options here if your .com is taken then you also have the choice of .net .org and all these other ones down here um, now you notice these little buttons over here that that'll show you okay so Mike's word dot net is 999 at GoDaddy now if you changed it to say one and one now would be 799 and Namecheap which is actually the other one that I use um, along with GoDaddy and I have a couple other pl uh, one other place that I use too but uh, mainly GoDaddy and Namecheap Namecheap is, I know it looks more expensive, but there is a reason why it's, it's a little bit more expensive, but it's a good uh, option to take. I'll show you why in a minute. In fact, GoDaddy, if you really want to go the cheap route at the start, you can find sometimes anywhere from $0.99 cents to, you know, like three ninety nine for a domain name. But when you renew it the next year, they're going to charge you like $16, $17 bucks a year. So they'll get your, their money out of you. So we pick out a domain name and we'll get rid of the Oregon coast here and first of all we'll go to GoDaddy just show you real quick what you have to do to get a domain name at GoDaddy so you've already made sure your domain name that you want is available by using instantdomainsearch.com and then all you'll have to do is just well okay that right down in here you'll just type it right in Now I've already got this domain so I know it's not available so that but you just click on search and then it'll tell you if it's available or not. So there's a couple other options here I could buy eBay, I could buy a dot info for two ninety nine, but I do believe they charge the same, you know, like I said, uh, uh, quite a bit more the next year when you renew. So whatever your choice you've got, then you'll just add add that choice to your cart then go through the process of buying the domain name at GoDaddy. Now the only thing I would recommend is not buying anything else besides your domain name. That would, they'll try to sell you all kinds of stuff, but uh, I would skip everything except for just getting your domain name. Now there's one other place that I mainly use called Namecheap.com. Namecheap.com. It's a similar process, you know, they'll have a big thing down here for you to put type your domain name in. Now the reason I like to use uh, Namecheap also is you see where it says who is guard right now, uh, right there. GoDaddy calls it privacy, but uh, whatever the case, it's who is guard and Namecheap. But what it does is there's a place called, you can do a who is search. I think it's whois.net and people will, can find out all your information that you use to register your domain besides your credit card number of course but if you don't have privacy or who is guard and when you buy a domain at Namecheap you can enable uh, who is guard for free so if you do want the the privacy I would suggest using Namecheap 
See, free right down there. It just says it right there. Free who is guard protection right there. So that's it's a good and and the renewal fees are cheaper than GoDaddy too. So it's a good it's a good way to go to. And I mean they don't look as fancy. They don't have as fancy an interface as GoDaddy, but they have millions of domains too, and they're a reputable company. So you can't go wrong with either one of those. GoDaddy, of course, is a huge company. But uh, so after you've got your domain name picked out and you've purchased your domain name, you know you go through the same process at Namecheap. Don't buy anything besides uh, your domain, and then you check a little box to see to say that you want the WhoisGuard enabled when you when you go through the process. But after you've done all that, then you'll need some hosting. And you know the only hosting company that I recommend nowadays. Well, I, I don't need to type in hosting. I'll ho host Gator. And you might have heard of them. They have ads quite a bit all over the place. But you know what? They're very, very good. And the reason being that I really like them. It, I had hosting at one other company, and it was okay. But I do d uh, web design and that sort of thing. So. I need support sometimes and HostGator support they have it 24-7 365 days a year those guys are always there and they're stationed in the US so you don't you don't get somebody from you know India or something and not that those guys aren't um, good but they just don't speak English sometimes very well so anyway you can click on live chat and you can just start chatting. I generally don't like the chat just because I don't like to type so much. I just call the toll-free number. And you might have to wait a bit, but you know, live chat, you might have to wait while the guy is, you know, he probably has hand handling a few different chats at once. So I just call the uh, toll-free number and I get the support. So HostGator is has done me right. It's a shared hosting. You know, if you when you step in, uh, up in class and you might want to get to a dedicated server or something say you have a website that has a lot of traffic and that sort of thing um, but for most everybody you just want the shared hosting plan and the one I recommend is called the baby plan reason being the hatchling plan is cheaper but you only get a single domain so if you know if, if you're really sure you're only gonna have one domain go ahead and buy the hatchling plan but otherwise get the baby plan because you have unlimited domains now it says unlimited disk space and bandwidth well there's a couple different definitions of unlimited but uh, needless to say it's probably not unlimited but you can do quite a bit you know when if your site really starts getting a lot of traffic you might have to step up in a in plans a little bit but uh, anyway that's the plan we'll just take a look at real quick now you'll just if over here if you do want to do the simple route uh, just go ahead and just register a domain it'll show you if it's uh, available or not just put, type it in there but if you bought it at Namecheap or GoDaddy just type it in over there and down here they have their own uh, disk uh, default coupon code but I've got a coupon code that I would appreciate if you'd use if you do uh, if, uh, do like my my videos your Gator 33. Your Gator 33. I do get a small commission if you guys do buy web hosting uh, using my coupon code. You will get 25% uh, off uh, instead of 20% off, but you don't get charged anything extra for using my coupon code. So, anyway, whatever the case may be, I'm just going to type in something here. I'll put in the, the website there and then continue to step two okay and here's where you you'll choose your billing cycle and that sort of thing now if you do go the monthly route I do have another coupon code which you can go to my website and find I'm not going to confuse people by putting it on here but the monthly route you only get the 25 percent off for the first month so the 25 percent uh, is only for the first bill so you're you're better off buying say a year or two years or even three years you know you save more the more you go but at least six months just to get a little bit better more savings if you really want to do it monthly then like I said I have a coupon code which will basically give you the first month for free if you go to my website I'll have that coupon code for you and you'll enter in all your billing information down here you can use PayPal to check out with if you want um, you say if you and it'll have this automatically check site lock I wouldn't recommend getting that but the only way I could see it being good is if you are going to be selling products and say you want a little uh, seal uh, you know showing people your site is secure 
possibly that might be something you'd want to get for 15 bucks a year. It might uh, help people that you know are a little hesitant about buying online. Otherwise, uncheck that box. <laughs> okay, down here at the bottom, like it says, it says 24/7, 365 phone, live chat, and email support. And you also have a money-back guarantee for the first 45 days. It'll show you what you're going to purchase, and then there's a coupon code down there. And then this is the total going to be due. Now I'm not going to buy the buy the account because I I've already done this a couple times, but that's what you want to do to get your hosting. And after that, they'll send you an email, which uh, you'll want to save somewhere. Save all this information. I like to get all this information and copy it to a text file and save it also besides the email but it'll have your your plan your control panel login uh, URL your username and your main domain your password for your control panel and here's your billing account uh, login plus your billing account uh, password which they made up for you so you can always change this password on which I if you want this is your control panel password and here's where you here's the name servers that are be going to be connected to your account so you have your hosting and now you want to connect since you bought a domain uh, at GoDaddy or Namecheap you'll want to I'm going to close this out first of all you'll want to connect the two together so you can get to installing WordPress and that sort of thing and, and get your site going so the process that I, I'm going to have to log into my account now to show you this. That's what you'll have to do too. If you purchase one, now you, you go up here. Now you'll just hover over all products over on the left on the the top menu, and then hover over domains, and go over here and all the way down to the bottom right and click on domain management. Okay, and now just check your box. You might just probably just have one domain, but put a check in your box and then hover over name servers and then click on say, set name servers. Okay, and down here you'll have it, your your name server number one, which you can get over here. You just I, I just like to just copy, uh, right click and copy and then come over here to the domain manager and and then right right click right click and paste the new domain and then I'll just do the same for the for the name server number two and then I'll just change the number which is they're always in sequence so this one's two two nine nine five so the next one will be two nine nine six so whatever the number for the first one is just add one and that'll be your name server number two and then you'll just click OK which I'm not going to do and then it'll generally will take two to four hours but for what's called for your name servers to resolve to your hosting account sometimes they say it can take up to a day or two but I've never had it take that long usually a couple hours or so so you click on OK and then you'll have to go back when when you're when when everything is resolved you'll click on this link here and it'll take you to to your control panel but I'm gonna show you also the process at Namecheap Namecheap there we go Okay, you'll want to log into your uh, me your log into your account first of all up here. Yeah, Namecheap is just a little bit different. To, like I said, their interface isn't quite as fancy, so but it doesn't matter. It does the job just fine. So hover over in the top left, and then over here you'll you'll click on Manage Domains under My Account. Okay, and then you'll show a list of accounts that you have. You just put a checkbox in one of them, the, the, the domain that you have. And then over here, you know, down here first of all, excuse me, you'll click on Edit Selected. Now over on the left in this little menu right here under General, the second one down it'll say Domain Name Server Setup, and that's the one you want to click. Okay, now you'll you'll have this button. You want to have make sure this button is checked right here. Specify custom DNS servers and then you'll just copy and paste uh, just the same process as before copy and paste the and paste in the first name server and, and number one and then do it again for number two and then change the number add one to that number and then you'll just click save changes and then you'll be good to go 
So that's the whole process. Now you'll know that if you're, like I said, it generally takes uh, two to four hours. You'll know that it isn't, uh, the, the name servers aren't resolved to your hosting account yet. If you click on your control panel uh, link here and it takes you to something other than this right here. Now another way to get to your control panel is to just put in your domain name and then a forward slash C panel. But either way, you'll go in there and then just put in your username and then your password. You can just copy and paste that in there and then you'll be good to go and then you can get into your control panel and install WordPress and take it from there. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Hope you found it helpful and please uh, subscribe, like, and favorite and as always, keep on keeping on. Take care.